Welcome to Be More Yogic. My name's Amanda D. And today we're going to do a class that contrasts two different energies. One of them is yin and the other one is yang. We also have a concept in yoga called stirim and sukham. Stirim is everything that's uh, stable, grounded, connected. And sukham is everything that is open, fluid, flowy. So the reason that it's important to have both these energies present um, in our practice, in our life, is that everything in life and the body has these two, concept, these two concepts. So if you think of the spine, it has the stirring quality. The bones are, are hard and stable so that it keeps us upright. The discs in between the spine are um, filled with fluid, so they're more um, sukham, which is the flexibility of the spine. And then we also have cells in the body. It's important that the cells have the stirring aspect so that it stops bacteria coming into the cells. But then they need to be sukham enough to allow in the nutrition. So when we bring this, um, these two concepts into our practice, we create the strength that is needed in the body, in the mind. We ground ourselves into the earth. But then we also need this fluidity, the vinyasa flow that we do in classes so that we oil up our joints, um, we stay nimble, we stay young. So let's come to a standing forward bend at the front of the mat. Set your blocks up if your hamstrings are tight on either side of the mat. Have your feet about two fists distance apart. You can measure that out by sticking the two fists between the widest part of the feet, the outside of the feet parallel to the side edges of your mat. Lift through the arches, press into the big toes. Lift through the kneecaps. If your hamstrings are tight, your knees are always bent, so your belly is on your thighs and you're not rounding in your lower back. Relax the head. Now either stay here if your hamstrings are tight, otherwise walk your hands forward. You can also have your hands on blocks. Have the weight over the arches and press the outer heels down. Arms in line with the ears, roll the biceps up, triceps down. So this will lengthen the side body. And then you're gonna walk your hands over towards the right. You wanna pull your left hip back Bend through your right knee and you'll feel a deeper stretch through that left side of the body. Hip point square to the front of your mat. Bend through both the knees, inhale to a flat back. Fold and expel the air to the right. Stay empty. Stay to the right, rolling up, so don't breathe in. You're rolling up the left posterior muscle. At the top, inhale, lift the head up. Exhale, drop the head and roll down through the center of the body. Belly in, bend the knees. Slowly rolling down. Knees stay bent if your hamstrings are tight. Otherwise, straighten your legs. Walk your hands forward. You can also have your hands on blocks. Weight over the arches. See if you can curl your fingers forward a tiny bit more. And then walk your hands over to the left, pulling back with the right hip so you're not taking your hips with you. Bend your left knee and you'll feel that stretch a little more. Drop your head. Bend both the knees, inhale, flat back. Stay to the left, expel the air out the mouth. No breath. Roll up the right posterior muscle. Arms stay to the left, head is heavy. Drop your head, drop your head. Inhale, lift the head up. Exhale, drop the head and roll down through the center of the body. Belly draws in. Knees bend, arms heavy. 
Inhale, lengthen to a flat back. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Reverse one dive up to standing, breathe in. Reverse prayer behind your back or bring your fists together. You can also hold on to your elbows. Press your thumbs towards each other, hips back. Tail lengthens, shoulders roll up and back. Start to lift through the heart. Keep pushing down into the feet to get more height through the heart center. Lengthen your tail. Eyes soft. And as you exhale, bend the knees, interlace the fingers, right index finger on top, fist over your head. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold forward, fist over your head. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold, lift the shoulders away from your ears as your fist reaches. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Move the weight into your right foot and exhale, slow as you can. Step the left foot to the back of the mat. Stay low with the body. Rise up high, lunge, inhale, arms up. Exhale, ground your palms to the floor and step back to down dog. Spread your fingers, roll forward into plank pose, inhale. Exhale, move the weight forward and slowly lower to your belly. Shoulder heads lift, pull forward and up into cobra, inhale. Legs are engaged, exhale, fold forward. Hands next to your lower ribs, inhale, lift into upward dog, pull the heart through. And then exhale, roll over the toes, back to down dog. Inhale, if your right leg up in the air, hips square. Exhale, bring your right knee behind your right wrist for pigeon. Walk your hands back, coming onto your fingertips, lift the heart. Exhale, softly through the mouth. Inhale, halfway through the nose. Kalabati breath, short, sharp exhalations through the nose. going, slow it down for five, four, three, two, one. Ground your palms, tuck your back toes as you inhale. Expel all the air out of the mouth as you lift your knee to your nose. Stay empty, lift the hips higher. Inhale, three-legged dog, lift the right leg up and back. Open the hip and bend the knee as you exhale. Come onto your fingertips, slow as you can. Step your right foot behind your left knee so you're on the tippy toe. Lift your hips, rock, rock star pose. Open across the chest. Roll that left shoulder blade on your back. Ground down through the whole of your left foot and look towards the front of your mat. Take your right hand down to the floor. Cross that right leg underneath you to the outside of your left hand. Fall in triangle, ground down your back heel, lift your left arm up. Ground down the big toe mound in the front. So it's like triangle pose, except you're leaning into your right hand. Left hand comes down, three-legged dog. Hop your, right leg in, your left leg into a better position. Exhale, step the right foot between your hands. Rise up to high lunge, breathe in. Exhale, draw your elbows in. Lift your left knee to your belly. Step back, inhale, high lunge. Moving slowly, exhale, left knee into your belly. And again, step back, high lunge, inhale. Exhale, left knee draws into your belly. Pull your elbows back. Lean forward to step back, high lunge, inhale. Active twist, right hand back, left hand forward. Drape the right arm down the back of your left leg and lift your left arm up. Exhale, left fingertips to the floor. Slide your back foot back, inhale, lift the right arm up. Look up. Hands to block so to the floor, straighten both the legs. Flex your front foot and fold. Bend the front knee, lift the right arm up. Front knee over the ankle. Exhale, hands to block so to the floor. Straight legs, flex foot and fold. 
Inhale, lift the right arm up, pick up that left hip point. Exhale, straighten both the legs and fold. Bend the front knee, inhale, lift the right arm up to the ceiling. And then exhale, Ardha Chandrasana. Reach your right hand forward about a foot, left arm lifts up. Concave the belly back and see if you can look up at your top hand. Pull the right outer hip back. Step your feet together, inhale to a flat back, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward over your legs. Bend the knees if you need, walk your hands forward maybe, and then walk your hands over to the left, pulling the right hip back. Now maybe this time you can lift the right leg back behind you. Try and reach it towards the back of the mat, more to the left, and then look under the armpit. Ardha Chandrasana 2. So it's like you're about to do a cartwheel. Drop that right leg a little more. Then step your feet back to sit bone distance apart. Inhale, flat back, stay to the left. Fold and expel the air. <sighs> stay empty. Roll up the right posterior muscle. So you're still leaning over to the left. Inhale, lift the head at the top. Exhale, drop the head and roll down the spine. Straight down the center, bend the knees, drop the head, drop the arms. Inhale, walk your hands forward, flat back. Again, your hands can be on blocks, walk your hands over to the right side of your mat. Pull the left outer hip back. Some of you will lift the left leg up and back now. Move the left leg over to the right side of your mat. Look under the armpit, Ardha Chandrasana 2. Again, looks like you're doing a cartwheel, pick up through the belly. Some of you might have the hand half off the floor, but keep trying to reach it down. Step the feet, sit bone distance apart, inhale, bend the knees, flat back. Stay to the right, expel the air. <sighs> Stay empty, head is heavy, roll up the left posterior muscle, staying over to the right. Inhale, lift the head. Drop the head and exhale, roll down the center of the spine. Bend the knees, belly to your thighs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Maybe bring your arms behind the back of the legs and pull yourself down. Reverse one, dive up to standing, strong legs, press the palms. Exhale, reverse prayer behind your back or hold onto your elbows or fists together. Hips back, tail lengthens, lift the heart, press your thumbs towards each other. Fold, interlace the fingers, left index finger on top, fist over your head. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward, lift through the shoulder heads. Exhale, fold, fist over your head. And again, bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold, fist up and over your head. One more time, bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Move the weight to your left foot and as slow as you can, step the right foot to the back of the mat. You wanna reach the crown of the head forward. Stay low to the floor. Rise up, high lunge, breathe in. Strong back leg, hands to the floor, down dog, breathe out. Roll forward to plank pose, breathe in. Lower slowly to your belly, breathe out. Shoulder heads lift, cobra spine, pull forward and up. Lower the forehead and slide your hands back a touch for upward dog. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, press back to down dog. Inhale, your left leg up to the sky, hips square. Exhale, bring the left knee behind the left wrist for pigeon. Walk your fingertips back, slide your back knee back. Exhale softly through the mouth. Inhale halfway through the nose, prepare. Kalabati breath, short, sharp exhalations through the nose. Keep going, slow it down for five, four, three, 
two and one. Take a full breath in, ground your palms, tuck your back toes, expel all the air out through the nose, knee to nose. <sighs> Inhale, lift the left leg in the air. Open the hip and bend the knee, pulling the right outer hip back. Come onto your left fingertips, and then as slow as you can in this transition, step your left foot behind your right knee. Right shoulder head moves back. You run your left tippy toe. Lift your hips high. Look towards the front of your mat. And then left hand to the floor. Thread your left leg underneath you to the outside of your right hand. Ground down the back heel. Lift the right arm up. Fall in triangle. Lean back. Ground down the big toe in the front. Right hand comes back down. Three-legged dog. Up your right foot to a better position. Exhale. Lightly step the left foot between your hands. High lunge. Strong back leg. Arms up. Lean forward to pull that right knee in. Elbows pull back. Lean forward to step to the back of the mat. High lunge. Try to do it slow with control. Inhale back. So you get used to transitioning your weight in your feet, creating a better balance. Inhale, high lunge. Active twist, left hand back, right hand forward. Take the left arm down the back of your right leg. Lift your right arm up. Exhale, take your right fingertips to the floor. Slide your back foot back. Inhale, lift the left arm up. Exhale, straighten both the legs. Flex the front foot and fold. Bend the front knee, knee over the ankle, left arm lifts. Exhale, hands to the floor, straight legs. Flex the front foot and fold. Bend the knee, left arm lifts up, breathe in. Exhale, straighten the legs and fold. Bend the front knee, lift the left arm up as you inhale. Left hand reaches forward about a foot, either on a block or the floor. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Pull the left outer hip back, concave the belly back, and look up towards the sky. Step your feet together, inhale to a flat back, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Reverse one dive, breathe in, look up. Swan dive and fold, breathe out. Inhale, flat back, prepare. Jumping or step back, chaturanga, up dog. Down dog, roll over your toes. Inhale, your right leg up in the air. Step the right foot lightly between your hands. Ground down the back heel, pass through warrior two to peaceful warrior. Hands to the floor, step back, plank, chaturanga, up dog. You can always skip that out, down dog. Inhale the left leg in the air, step the left foot between your hands, ground down the back heel. Peaceful warrior, inhale, left knee to the left, hands to the floor, step back, plank, either knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, down dog, and breathe. Deep breaths in and out through the nose. Wiggle your hips back a little more. Two more breaths, inhale. Exhale in one, reach your heels to the floor. Inhale. Exhale in two. Bring your inner feet to touch, bend the knees, look forward, float your feet forward. Flat back, breathe in, folding forward, breathe out. Reverse one dive, inhale, reverse prayer behind the back, exhale. Lengthen your tail, lift the heart, breathe in, fold and interlace the fingers, right index finger on top, fist over your head. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Exhale, slowly step the left foot to the back of the mat. Rising up to high lunge, arms up, breathe in. Hands to the floor, step back to down dog, breathe out. 
Roll forward into plank pose, inhale, look slightly forward, chaturanga to upward dog, breathe in, down dog, pressing back. Inhale if you're right, leg up in the air. Step the right foot between your hands. Ground down the back, heel peaceful, warrior, inhale. Hands to the floor, ground your palms, exhale. Three-legged dog, lift the right leg up and back. Open the hip and bend the knee. A breath cycle, rock star pose. That's the inhalation and the exhalation. Falling triangle, a breath cycle. That's the breath in. Ground down the back heel, lift the left arm up. Three-legged dog, inhale the right leg up and back. Hop your left foot to a better position and step the right foot between your hands. Rise up to high lunge, breathe in. This time maybe keep your left leg straight and kick it forward. Step back, high lunge. Exhale, knee in. And then maybe kick the leg forward. Step back, high lunge. One more time, knee in. Maybe kick the leg forward. High lunge. Active twist as you exhale. Peaceful warrior, inhale. Elbow to the outer thigh. Hands to prayer position. Lift the heart to the thumbs, three breaths. Exhaling one. Inhale, lift the left hip point. Heart to thumbs, exhale. Outer hip squeezing, lean the head and heart back. Exhaling three. Ardha Chandrasana, breathe in. You've got an exhalation to be there. Feet together, Ukatasana, chair pose, arms up. Weight to the heels, swan dive and fold. Reverse swan dive up to standing, last side. Reverse prayer, roll hold into your elbows. Hips back, tail lengthens, lift the heart. Exhale, fold, interlace the fingers, left index finger on top. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Step the right foot slowly to the back of the mat. Rising up, high lunge, breathe in. Hands to the floor, down dog, breathe out. Roll forward to plank, knees, chest, chin this time. Maybe press up to plank or cobra, chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, pull through, down dog, press back. Inhale the left leg in the air, step the left foot lightly between your hands. Ground down the back heel, peaceful warrior, inhale. Hands to the floor, ground your palms, exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale the left leg up and back. Open the hip and bend the knee. A breath cycle, rock star pose, inhale. Open the heart as you exhale. Fall in triangle, left foot to the outside of your right hand. Ground down the back heel, lift the right arm up. Exhale, bring your hands back down. Three-legged dog, left leg up and back. Step the foot lightly between your hands. Rise up to high lunge, strong back leg. Draw your knee in, and then maybe kick the leg forward. High lunge, inhale. Exhale, knee in, maybe kick the leg forward. And again, high lunge, breathe in. Right knee in, maybe kick the leg forward. High lunge, breathe in. Active twist, breathe out. Lean back, inhale. Right elbow to the outer thigh. Hands to prayer, lift your heart to your thumbs and take an exhalation. Three more breaths. Outer hip squeeze in. Lift the right hip point. Exhale, two. Back leg super straight, belly off your thigh. Ardha Chandrasana, inhale. You've got an exhalation to be there. Feet together, Ukatasana, chair pose, arms up. Swan dive and fold, exhale. Inhale, come into a flat back. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Now this time we're gonna come into a yin practice holding poses for two minutes. 
So just see how this feels differently on the body. Ground down the back heel this time. Open up to warrior two. Now take some long, deep, full breaths. I want you to check that your front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. If you look at your back foot, it should be parallel to the back edge of your mat. And if you press down through the outer foot, the arch will lift, but keep the big toe grounded. Back leg straight and strong, kneecap lifting. You're gonna lengthen from your inner thigh to your inner knee, shorten from your outer knee to your outer thigh. Pick your hip points up, so the level to the floor. The weight is evenly on that front foot. And again, you're picking up the arch of the front foot. Feel like you're trying to wrinkle up your mat, your legs squeezing in towards each other. Notice if you're sticking your hips back or pushing your hips forward. So that's one minute. Got one more minute, you're doing really well. Lift through the lower belly, lengthen your tail. Your arms should start to be feeling tired now, so see if you can relax the shoulders. Lift the back arm a little bit. If you turn your palms up, your inner elbows will spin up. Then keep the outward rotation of the arms and turn the hands back down. Deep breaths. Soften your face and jaw. Bend that front knee a little deeper. If your body starts to shake, just notice it, try not to react. If the tension's starting to creep up into your shoulders, your jaw, your face, soften. Almost there. Very nice. Now you're gonna straighten the front leg, all done. Take a moment. Give your head a little wiggle, releasing any tension. Now we're going to come to triangle, so lift up all five toes in your front foot. Cut this right outer hip back, so there's an outward rotation in the front leg. You can either, even self-adjust, pull that outer thigh down and a thigh up. Now your choice, it'll be a little easier if you take your fingers to a block or to the floor. If you want to use your core a little more, take the hand to the inner calf. Lift that left arm up. Try and lengthen the underside of the body. So your right hip pulls back, your right armpit reaches forward. Lift your kneecap. It almost feels like there's a micro bend in that front knee. Keep rolling the right lower ribs underneath you and rolling the top ribs back. Lower belly lifts, always for that support. Head leans back, keep spiraling. Strong legs, outer legs lift, inner legs lift. Press firmly through the outer back foot. Try to relax anywhere that's over gripping. Reach longer from the tail to the crown of the head. you need to take a little bit of a rest and take that hand to a block or to the floor, feel free to do that. If you find that the neck feels strained, just relax the head. This pose is called Trikonasana, triangle pose. And it gets its name because you can see the triangle between the legs, you can see a triangle between the arm and the leg there. The triangle is one of the strongest structures. That's where we, we use that to build bridges. You can self-adjust and pull to the left arm behind your back, pull the right hip back. Fill your lower back towards your forearm. Maybe reach the arm back up. Maybe you can take it off the floor for a moment. So 
So we're over halfway. A moment longer. Wiggle in any way that feels good to you. But try to keep the structure of the pose. And now we're going to move into Ardha Chandrasana. So bend the front knee. Heel toe your back foot in. You want to get used to lifting into the pose instead of jumping into the pose. Take your hand either onto a block or to the floor. The hand is about a foot forward of your toes. Pull your right outer hip back. Move the weight over the arch of the foot. Then keep trying to stack your left hip on top of the right. Lift that left leg a little higher. You can use your arm as a ruler to measure that the side body, hip and leg are in one line. The tendency will be for this top leg to go dead. So energize, press through the heel. Lift the left arm up. Try to spiral your chest to look up. Breathing in and out. In and out. Just notice how the mind reacts when we hold these poses for a long time. Usually it's telling you to come out of it as soon as possible. Try to reach from that top hand to the lower foot. Reach out through the back foot to the crown of the head like a star. But insert the limbs into the socket. So as much as you're reaching out, you want to be pulling back in. Press your big toe mound down in the front. If you find that your arms are starting to go to sleep, always feel free just to rest the arm for a moment. Try not to come out of the pose, though. But if you feel any pain in your lower back or joints or anything like that, of course, release the pose. See if you can readjust to make it feel better. But always working with the breath. Just a few moments longer. Inhale. Exhale in. Nice. And then step your feet together. Coming into awkward pose, chair pose. Have a bit of space between your heels. Roll yourself all the way up. So you should be able to see your toes. Move the hips back. Clear lift of the arches again. Outer hip squeeze in. Lift your arms up. You want to take your arms behind your ears so that the chest opens. Sit a little lower. Lift through the hip points so the tail lengthens. You can lift your pelvic floor muscles. A nice exercise is every time you exhale, wrinkle the pelvic floor muscles up. Every time you inhale, soften and relax them down. So you exhale, you wrinkle the pelvic floor muscles up, sit a little lower, and then soften as you inhale. A few more times like that. Exhale, lifting them up. Inhale, releasing them down. Exhale, lifting. So it's kind of the same exercise that, like a pregnant woman would do, but the, um, the pelvic floor muscles is a part of Mulabanda, so that's one minute. And it's a part of the core system, so it's very important that you get those muscles strong. They stabilize the hip. They help you to lift out the spine. See if you can lift them up and hold them now for as long as possible. Relax the shoulders, the neck, the jaw. Notice if your eyes are starting to bug out. I like to lift my toes and then I have a clear footprint on the floor. Weight back to the heels. Stay with it. A few more breaths. We sit a little lower if you feel the legs keep trying to straighten. Move the arms back. 
and then exhale, swan dive and fold. Hold into your elbows, reach your elbows to the floor, with heavy hands and blocks, relax the head. You're just gonna hold this for two minutes. You can open your feet a little wider. So this will just give you a break. Yogic toe lock. If it doesn't, then put your hands onto blocks if your hamstrings are tight. The shoulders away from your ears. Any other variations you know, you can also interlace the fingers and reach the fist over. Shoulders away from your ears, just to give those shoulders a little stretch out, preparing us for the other side. Remember to swap index finger um, so that the, the opposite index finger is in front. Just to even out the wrist, the shoulders. Keep plugging your legs in as you push your feet down. So there's that lengthening of the bone, or it feels like the lengthening of the bone. No wrinkles in the back of the neck, so not here, here. Bring your hands down to the floor, and now we're on the other side. So you're gonna step your right foot to the back of the mat. The measurement will be front knee over the ankle, hips same height as front knee, and then ground down the back foot for warrior two. Move the front heel in line with the arch of the back foot and bring yourself up. Look at your back foot, see that the back edge of the foot is parallel to the back of the mat and press down into the outer foot. So the arch is lifting and the big toe is pressing and the back leg is straight. You don't wanna push into the kneecap. You want to instead feel like the foot pushes down to get the leg straight to lift the kneecap up. The inner thigh to the inner knee in the front leg grows longer. The outer knee to the outer hip grows shorter. Notice if you're pushing your hips forward or you're sticking your butt back. Hips back, your tail lengthens to bring you into alignment. So the lower belly tones. Try to get that front thigh parallel to the floor. Reach from finger to finger. Lift the hands a little higher than your shoulders. Then if you feel the tension creeping up to the top of the body, you want the strong legs, but softness in all the areas that we like to hold our tension, like the belly, the jaw. So halfway there. So we've got about eight more breaths left. Lift up the left hip point. You wanna feel like you're pushing your right inner thigh towards the front heel. The weight is nice and even in that front foot and the arch is lifting. Squeeze your legs in. If your arms get tired, just give yourself a hug for a moment. Squeeze your shoulders and then come straight back into it. Trying to maintain the pose. If your legs grow tired, you straight your leg for a moment, but try not to stay there. Come back into it. Okay, no pain in your knees, no pain in your lower back or joints. Otherwise, you maneuver yourself until you don't feel that. Looking straight down your middle finger, eyes are even. Gaze is soft. And then we straighten the front leg. That was two minutes. Give your shoulders a little wiggle. Moving into the next pose. So you wanna turn your back toes in just slightly. Cut this left outer hip back. And you'll see my kneecap lifts as I lift up my toes. Outward rotation in that front leg so you can hold the inner thigh, roll it up, outer thigh down as you connect the big toe. You can take your hand onto a block or to the floor, or you can use more of your core. You can transition between those two positions if the body gets tired. Pull this left outer hip back so the underside of the body grows long. Your top arm reaches up to the sky. Never pushing into your kneecaps. Micro bend in that front knee that you can feel but I can't see with my eyes. Roll 
the lower ribs underneath you. Pull the belly back slightly. Look up. If this is uncomfortable on the neck, know you can always keep looking to the side wall or even look down. You can change the positions. If you do take the hand down, try not to put all the weight into the hand. You do want to use your legs. You want to strengthen the hips, the knees, the ankles, the feet. Notice if your chin is kind of curling in, lean back. That was two minutes, Let be, let's bend the front knee, now transitioning into half moon. And try not to jump, so I always like to take my hand off the floor, use my lower leg to push into place, and then I slowly, slowly, slowly bring the left hand to a block or to the floor. Pull the belly back. So you lift out of this left hip point. Ooh. If you fall out of it, come back into it. If you bend the lower knee, it should be going in the same direction as your toes. The tendency will be for that leg to roll in and the knee to collapse. So keep pulling the outer hip back. Move the weight back into the arch. The tendency will be to have the weight forward in the ball of the foot. You can measure out the alignment of the top leg, so side of the body, hip and leg, all in one straight line to each other. Try and roll the lower ribs underneath you a little more. Neutral rotation of top leg, outward rotation of lower leg. Deep breaths. Okay, we're halfway there. Now, if you feel the outer left hip gripping, you need to use your pelvic floor muscles a little more. So, um, sometimes the outer bottom there starts to go to sleep. So, energize your inner thighs. Even though the leg is lifting up, feel like you're squeezing your legs in. If the arm gets tired, you can always bring the hand down. You can release the neck. A few more breaths. We're almost there. I'm there with you. If you do come out of it, take a moment, but do come back into it as soon as you can. And eventually, after practicing this class a few times, you might be able to hold the posture for the whole duration. And there we go. Step your feet together. This time, open your feet as wide as your mat. You can come into squat pose. We're just going to take a little bit of a rest here for two minutes. Just to release the legs, the back. So if your heels don't come down, you don't want to be here rounding. You want to take the tip of the elbows to the knees, so you might lift up onto your tippy toes. And if you'd like to put a block under your bottom, you can also do that. But then bend the heels down. Squeeze your knees in towards the elbows. Pull the heart through to your thumbs. We're going to catch our breath here, inhaling through the nose. Exhaling. Find that peaceful state of being. Always noticing how your mind reacts, whether things are good or you feel like they're going bad. You just observe. That's one minute. And then we 
Learn to stay in that steady place rather than being pulled around by our thoughts. So that's why the classes not, are not always easy. It's to train us when things get challenging, how do we stay steady and calm? And we do that by focusing on our breath, keep watching the quality of thoughts in the mind, trying to soften the body where we don't need to be holding and strengthen the areas that are underworking, that are a little weak. That's in our personality as well as our bodies. Now you're gonna move the block off to the side. Come down onto all fours and just flip your fingers back just for a moment. We're not gonna hold this for two minutes. I just want you to prepare your wrist. Feel like you're squeezing a basketball, a circular object as you bend the elbows back. And then bring the back of the hands to the floor, bump the fists against each other, curl your fingers in, and then see if you can move your elbows towards straight. If your fingers unfill, tighten the fingers again, keep the back of the wrist on the floor, and then you'll feel a stretch in the back of the wrist. Okay, next pose. So spread the fingers wide, wrist creases parallel to the front of the mat. We're gonna hold this for two minutes, slide, your left foot back, press through the heel, lift through the lower belly, so you're supporting in your core, shoulder blades on your back, sides of the neck lift, so your head is not drooping, because that's gonna make it harder, and then here we go. So just observing at first, notice if you need to lift your hips a little more, Squeeze your arms in towards each other and find a steady breath. Tell yourself and commit to the pose for the whole duration, even if you need to modify a little bit as we go along, which I'm gonna give you those modifications. Press into your fingertips. Try and move the weight to the front of the knuckles. Soften the eyes. And you can count the breath if you want to inhale for eight counts. And then you know you're coming up to the first minute, which is there it goes. So we've already been here a minute, you've only got one left. Make sure you're not holding any tension in your neck. Now the modification could be that you lower your knees, but try to stay here with the hips lifted, the tail lengthening, size of the neck lifting. And if at any moment you can pick up your knees. Sometimes I start to do the alphabet in my mind just to keep myself occupied. Almost there. We're gonna get a rest after this. And here comes the rest. Whew. Good job. Coming into child's pose. Open the knees a little wider. Soften the forehead down. Let the breath go, the body soften. And again, if you're not holding the poses for the whole duration, try not to be hard on yourself. Just know it's something to build up to. Who knows, maybe eventually you can hold those poses longer, going into three minute holds. Maybe you need to shorten them and do one minute holds, but work to your own pace. There's no rush. So we're just gonna be here for the rest of that two minutes. 
So you get a nice long vest. So one more minute. Few more breaths there. Okay. So we've got just a few more poses left, and then the last couple are just going to be some soft holding poses. So come to lie into your belly. Now you've got a few choices here arms along steady body, lengthen your legs back. So you can have your big toes touching and your legs lifting, and then you can lift through the heart this way with your hands down. Maybe you can lift your hands up off the floor. Some of you might bend your knees, catch hold of your ankles, lift your shoulders, roll the shoulder heads back. Try to not let your knees wing out like so. So you wanna squeeze your legs in towards each other. Kick your feet back. Draw the sides of the neck back. So it's not your deepest bow pose ever. Try to be at like the 70% mark. If your knee's a little higher, notice if you're gripping your bottom. Um, you want to instead lengthen your tail down. Inhaling, exhaling through the nose. Inhaling, exhaling through the nose. Keep the belly drawing in so it is a chest breath. And notice if you're bugging your eyes out, which is a tendency in back bend. So forehead soft, eyebrows soft. One more minute. If you feel it in your lower back, come straight out of it and just rest. You can wind wipe your legs side to side. Remove your neck if you feel that the side of the neck is gripping. About six more breaths. Maybe lift it a little deeper now. Size of the neck, draw back. Knees closer. And release. Keep your knees bent and then you're just gonna window wipe your legs side to side. So I'm not going to stay here for two minutes. And extend your legs back and bring your knees under your hips and just look towards your navel, cat spine. Inhale, cow spine just to release. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow spine. And exhale, cat. Bring your legs through, grab a block. So now you're gonna bring the soles of your feet together. Have your legs in a diamond shape. So Torvasana rather than Baddha 
We're going to hold this for two minutes. You can have your hands on your ankles. You're rounding the spine. It's the only pose where we actually want to round the spine. Some of you might take your hands underneath the ankles and support from underneath. And then you can bring your forehead to the arches of the feet. You might have to bring your feet back or forward. Try not to pull into this pose. You can also put a block on the feet if your head doesn't reach. And then the whole of this pose, you're just trying to completely soften. Driving the breath down into the lower back. Maybe count the breath, inhale for the count of three. That's one minute. And exhale for the count of six. So just under one minute left. Inhaling for three, exhaling for six. Relax the head, relax the neck. Soften the inner thighs. Relax your shoulders, face soft. Gently roll yourself all the way up. So we're going to hold this for one minute either side. So step your right foot to the outside of the knee. If you need to sit on a block, sit on a block. Take your right finger touch behind you. Inhale, lift your left arm up. Elbow to the outer thigh. Roll to the front of your sit bones. Either stay here or thread your hand underneath the leg. Taking the right arm behind you, catching your bind. Relax the shoulders away from your ears. Extend through that straight leg, press through the heel. Even though you're not looking at it, you want to have consciousness in that straight leg. Spreading the consciousness throughout the body. Lift up on the inhalation, twist a little deeper on the exhalation. Press the top of the left hamstring down. Come back to the front, extend through the right leg. Let's take it to the other side, one more minute. On this side, lift the left arm up. Take the finger touch behind you, right arm lifts. Hook the elbow to the outer thigh. Press the knee back. Try not to force the twist. You want to feel like you're stabilizing through the hips. You're lifting up from the lower belly, and from that point, you start to twist. The final flourish is in the necks. You don't want to strain your neck. Some of you will come into the bind, if you did on the other side. If it doesn't feel right in your shoulders from one side to the other, then, of course, don't force anything. But then you know next time maybe you can release the bind and not do it on either side. You never want to imbalance yourself. If you have an injury in one side, don't constantly, every time you practice, do the modification on one side and not on the other. Of course, this will bring imbalance.
extend through your right leg even though you're not looking at the leg. And then come back to the front. Last pose before Shavasana. Bend your knees, we're gonna hold this for two minutes. Take your belly onto your thighs. So you wanna kinda of curl your belly up. Hold on underneath your hamstrings. Now you might stay here if you feel the stretch already, otherwise start to curl your heels forward. Your belly stays connected to your thighs. If it comes away, it means you've gone too far. Keep curling, keep curling for some of you. If you get all the way down, your belly's still on your thighs. This is the safest way to practice your forward bend so you're not pulling on your lower back. If your belly's still touching the thighs like mine, then you can press your hamstrings down and take your hands forward. I prefer this variation than sitting on a block because when you're sat on a block, even though it does work, um, you end up pushing down into the knee joints when the legs straighten. And this just keeps the lower back nice and long so you don't even have the option there to round in the lower back. Rest from your inner thighs to your inner feet. Draw from your outer feet to your outer hips. One more minute. See if you can inhale, lengthen a little more. Exhale, going a little deeper. Breathe right underneath the armpits into the side body. Drawing the toes towards your nose. Lengthen in the breath. yourself all the way up, slowly moving out of these deep postures. We're going to come to lie down onto our backs. Well done, all done. Have your feet as wide as your hips. Just look down your body, see that you're in the center of your body. Bring yourself down. Maybe take your hands behind the back of the head and just Stretch out the back of the neck so you're not pulling, you're just releasing the head into the hands, elbows in. And then keeping the back of the neck long, lie the head down, shoulder blades underneath you. Palms face up. Relax your legs. Arms dangle. Belly completely softens. Trying to not go through the class in your mind. Letting the past go and coming into the moment. Focusing on the sensations in the body. As the body relaxes, the breath will naturally get shorter. And this is why this is called the corpse pose, corpse-like Shavasana. Till the breath is barely there at all. The body so relaxes like corpse-like. Relax your lips, your tongue.
Stay here for as long as you like, preferably five minutes of the shortest, seven minutes or 12 minutes would be the best. Wiggle your fingers or toes, draw your knees in, your back side to side and your lower back. Using the floor to massage the spine, the muscles around the lower back. Take your right arm along steady air, roll onto your right side. Let the legs flap. Come into sit up in your comfortable seat, whether cross legged position. Oh, for me, I like Vavasana, sitting on the block between my feet. Sit tall through the spine, open across the heart, soft forehead. Find that still point. Where two energies meet in the middle. The point of balance. Working with the yin energy, the yang energy, flow, stillness, strength, openness, light and dark. Take a deep breath in. Thank you for joining us at Be More Yogic. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.